uh, good afternoon everyone uh, so i'll be presenting about uh, unlocking the power of social media for science communication so before i start i would like to know how many of you use social media for science communication <laughs> okay almost everyone okay no on the other side um so this presentation will be useful for you know individuals or as a scientist to promote your research or even to your geological survey so because my i'm my background is communications and media so when i job when i started my uh, work at eurogeo surveys i was from a different background uh, so i had no knowledge about geology when i started but then you know when i started working on different things i came to know and i started to like geology so i'll be presenting it in a different perspective and uh, you know you can you can see how it uh, how it reflects how it how you can use it on your work uh okay so i'll start with the introduction and then i'll present an overview of uh, the benefits and uh, challenges of social media and what are the some of the effective tools that you could use and uh, followed by a short group activity so what is science communication so julie was like presenting it in the morning and then it is to present it in a simple way it's about con conveying something to the public especially your facts or information or your research and you have various media to do that so you have newspapers you have radio you have television and then the social media so i'll be focusing specifically on the social media part and as you can uh, as you can see with the advent of internet uh, the information landscape has been totally it has been deeply transformed and uh, so social media is like it is now enabling scientists and all the communication practitioners to present their research to the general public so without any intermediary so you don't need a press or anyone to you know to present your research when it's uh, on social media so you have direct control of what you are presenting so it has revolutionized the social media has revolutionized the way the science is communicated and what are the benefits of it so you have a good reach so it's very easy to reach and engage with a wider audience so you'll have a wide the audience background so most of them will be from different countries and you can have a good reach for whatever you're communicating on social media and the accessibility so most of the platforms which are easily accessible and it is often free unless you have a blue tick on the twitter where elon musk started to charge something but unless and apart from that you know most of the platform are free and easily accessible and you can have two way communications and good interactions with uh, your followers or audience which is another main benefit with that you can also start to get ideas you can get feedback on your work etc and if you have a complex scientific topic to present you can support it with some good images or good infographics or videos so those visuals will be another benefit when you are communicating something on social media and the timeliness so if you are something and you can directly post it on uh, the social media platform and it is already made available there so timeliness is another major concept and global reach so if you have audience from different countries so it's very easy to reach them and you can educate them with your findings so i just made a list of the important social media tools so twitter is a micro blog like most of you know this but still to give a quick overview so twitter will be like to share something which is a micro blogging platform and you have character limit of 280 characters so it's it's uh, you have to keep your text very short but you can support with uh, photos videos etc and facebook is a net networking platform where it was mainly designed to connect with your friends families etc and instagram it's like a visual based platform it's mainly to share the photos and videos and linkedin is a professional networking platform where you connect with other scientists or uh, the or individuals with the same interests and reddit is a community based platform for discussing and sharing information uh, so tiktok is quite popular now where you can share something which is engaging and uh, for it's mostly used by youth but it's just for sharing science related content where you can make quite uh, different videos there so through all these platform you can collaborate among scientists 
and this can definitely increase the visibility of your work and uh, provide a platform for constructive feedback and ideas. So this is, I found this image on Google and it's quite interesting uh, to know the demographics of users. So if you can see on, if you can see on the Twitter, so it has like 25 to 34 percentage of, the age category of 25 to 34 is like 30 percent. So Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram and LinkedIn has the view, uh, the percentage of 25 to 34. Whereas in YouTube, you can see it's like 35 to 54. Um, when I was uh, reading about the reasons for that, uh, most of the most of the people with the age category of 18 to 24, they have this TikTok, which is like it's a widely used platform now. And uh, 35 to 54, it is followed by other age categories as well. So here are some tips for effectively communicating, uh, effectively communicating on social media. So the first thing to know is, as Julie was presenting this morning, you have to know your uh, audience. So understand who you are communicating to and uh, tailor your contents accordingly. Uh, so here I would like to present an example about the Panafgeo project. So when it started, we had the Twitter and LinkedIn page and we didn't have Facebook. And then we did some research and then we uh, were discussing with our African colleagues on like, we are asking them, why not use Facebook here? And then uh, we came to know that, you know, most of the users in Africa, they prefer to use Facebook for uh, for reading different things and for uh, uh, to know more about the geology, etc. So then we started the Facebook page for Panafgeo, and then we now have 800 plus followers uh, from the Facebook page, which is getting quite uh, good impressions right now. Another thing to know is to keep your message simple. So try to be clear and use concise language, and uh, it's always good to support it with the visuals. So if you have a complex scientific concept to explain, try to support it with some good images or videos or infographics, which can further the engaging rate for that particular post. And be timely. So if you have a latest discovery on something, try to present it on social media and then you will get good, good reach for it as well. And engaging with your audience. So if you have, if you have something, try to engage with your audience on uh, as part of Facebook comment or sending them messages or interacting with them, asking them for another feedback or ideas, etc. Uh, so other thing is about being, being accurate and credible. So when you are sharing something, you just, you assure that, you know, the information that you are sharing is like reliable and it's accurate enough and it will have a major impact on your, uh, what you are sharing and to your account. Diversify content. So try to mix your post with like text and images so that you offer a different varieties on your social media platform. And you can also collaborate with other organizations and individuals. So if you're uh, partnering with someone for tagging them, tagging another relevant organization, and if they share it from their account, you'll have a wider reach for that. So collaborating is another major concept. And the last point is about having a positive image. So always be respectful when you're engaging with someone, which will have a major impact. And when you're commenting or when you're sending something, so it's always important to be positive, to have a positive image. So though you have like a lot of benefits with social media, it comes with some challenges. And some of the main challenges are the misinformation. So if you are sharing something which is, which is uh, not true and it can harm the public understanding and trust in science, so it's always important to be accurate of what you're sharing. And uh, the next point is about echo chambers. So social media algorithms is designed in a different way and then it can create echo chambers. So if you have this existing beliefs or biases, so you get, a, you get something related to that and it can also reduce the impact and limited attention span. So there are a lot of things to, to scroll down on social media. So it's it's always hard to communicate a very, uh, very complex scientific concept. So that is also another major disadvantage and limited expertise. So you never know the background of, of your audience. So it's always uh, 
crucial to understand that to know who your followers are and to have a, have an understanding on that quantitative overload so there are like so many information available and it's always difficult to understand the correct source of the information and uh, distinguishing them is also an important point so here is an overview of the online tools which can support your communication activities so you have canva which is like a graphic designing tool which you can use to support the social media posts you can have a, you can edit the image or a video so canva is an important tool that you could use and uh, hootsuite is a social media management tool and uh, there is this buffer where you can schedule the social media posts for different platform and unsplash is a stock photo library where you can download the images for free and google analytics is for the web traffic uh, tracking so for your website it can be used to track how many viewers you have and the demographics of different uh, viewers of your website so bitly is a link shortening tool uh, which is all which makes a a uh, big link to a small one and you can use it on social media and you have use use seo is the search engine optimization tool and the mailchimp for email marketing so here is a short group activity to to just to discuss among ourselves so what do you think uh, so what do you know when sharing something scientific findings on social media what do you think is most important like to no source of the information to have the visual representation of the data the simplicity of the language used to describe the findings or all of the above what do you think is the correct one here yeah exactly so you have to use the all the above so you have to when sharing something just make sure that you have a, the source of the information is true visual representation to make the complex topic simpler and the simplicity of the language so that it's easily understandable so the second one how you can increase the reach of social media post about a scientific topic you use hashtags or uh, tagging relevant individuals and organizations or by using eye catching visuals or all the above yes so when you are uh, using social media it's all make sure you know you have a proper hashtag because when you have a trending topic when you have an hashtag so you you have the high probability that your post also appears there and it will also enhance your view for that particular post and tag relevant organization so that they retweet or they share it with they share it from their account and uh, eye catching visuals to make sure that your post stays there so all the above is the correct one there man how can you verify the accuracy of your of the information shared on social media what do you think for this one? how can you verify the accuracy of the content that is shared do you check the source of the information or consult with subject matter experts or do you do your own research or all of the above okay let's okay and others what do you think is the right one here <laughs> d how many of you think it's d D. D. Okay. Yeah, D is the right one. <laughs> so because when you are uh, when you need to verify something, so make sure that the information that is shared is you know the source is real, and you consult with matters if you are unsure about the first one. Option A, you go for option B, and you consult with someone who has knowledge about that specific topic, and even if they are not. really sure you can always do your independent research and compare with what they say so all of the above right for me so thus in conclusion the effective science communication on social media requires to understand your audience so when you have a deep understanding it's always helpful make your message as clear and concise and try to engage and collaborate with others so with the right tool and strategies the individuals organization and scientists they can have the leverage of power to use the social media to reach a wider audience and uh, share their scientific information and perspective in an effective manner and to build a public uh, and to build the public with like understanding and to have a trust in science so with 
all these right tools and strategies you can help to foster a more informed and a scientifically literate society thank you thank you very much krishna